Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais with another episode of The Yacking Show. This is The Yacking Show business channel, and we bring you actionable ideas and tips to help you survive and thrive in the interesting times we're heading into. We do that by bringing you interesting guests. Today will be no exception. But first, let me introduce co-host Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Peter. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us today. We so appreciate having you. And as Peter mentioned, we do have another special guest. And we are so privileged to have Dina Adams as our guest today. Hello, Dina. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you guys today? Wonderful. Good. Thank you. So, Dina, Good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so you are a coach that specializes in helping people cope with stress and also to help them gain clarity. So Dina, what sets you apart from other coaches? Um, that I'm not just a coach. It's just a title. So people kind of have a grasp of something that I do. Um, I find that my entire life, I am always willing to give advice, share knowledge, give wisdom, help people where I can and be that support person with them along the journey. So walking with them through things and not just being a typical coach is what really sets me apart along with utilizing that intuitive aspect and trusting God with everything that I do. Um, letting him lead and guide and knowing that it's not just me. I can only do what I can do because of how God has blessed me in my life. So. So, mm -hmm. so, so if people come to you for clarity in their personal life, or is it specifically business that they typically come to you for? Mm, that's a great question. What's interesting is a lot of people, most everyone that I have worked with comes to me because of business first. Okay. Yet we get into how their inner self and their foundation in how they live their life how they walk in their faith impacts their business and how it's all interconnected. And so it's understanding that your business can only grow and improve as much as your internal limitations will allow you to. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So we can, we can hit, we hit on a lot of different things regardless of the issue that they come to me for. Okay. okay. So is this what you're talking about on your website when you say you help others embrace the collision between their personal life and their business. And I, I like that word collision because that that is a very good description, I think, of what happens to most of us who go into business for ourselves, right? So mm -hmm. tell our audience a little bit more about that. Um, so I became an entrepreneur when I was 12. <laughs> I had two businesses outside of going to school and babysitting my brother. Um, we were wow. in a new place. My mom... Um, and my brother and I moved away from where we grew up and where she had us. And um, I became that support for my mom on getting my brother to and from school so she could work and provide for our family. And so it was just a role that I was like, you know what? I really want to lessen some of the burden on my mom mm -hmm. and make some money for myself. So I started a paper route at 430 in the morning and I babysat and... And one of the things that stuck out to me then was I wasn't, I guess, like a typical babysitter. It wasn't just making sure they were okay. It was they ate dinner. They cleaned up after themselves. They did their homework. They had to be responsible and make sure the house was better than when their parents left. It was important to me. Mm -hmm. And when I became a mom and later on got married and had two more kids <laughs> It was, I had an opportunity to stay home and I just felt like I wanted to also contribute. And so I started a business and I got into network marketing and then eventually I, you know, I did so many things. And the one challenge was how do you find like this harmony moving mm -hmm. between being a mom, being a wife, running a household, making sure everybody gets what they need. I get what I need. And I can still serve well in my business. And it became a challenge, especially for those of us that are workaholics. <laughs> and we just want to sit and work all the time. And mm -hmm. um, so it was really, it's really about 
trying to stay out of the box everybody else is trying to put you in Mm. and embrace truly how your life functions. How do you want it to be? And really shut out the noise of your family, your friends, the people that are not your advisors, the people that Mm. are not seeking wisdom for you and really trust that you really know what you need to be doing if you would just embrace that inner voice and know your truth and know what your foundation is and know your core values and let those be the things that make decisions for you. And it's a, it's a tricky thing to navigate. It took me a very long time Mm -hmm. with the seasons constantly changing, raising all these kids and trying to be there for them. How do you help them see that this is important? Cause my kids, even to this day, they're all adults now say you always were working Yet it didn't matter if I was volunteering at the school, if I was running errands for the household, if I was grocery shopping, everything to them looked like work because Mm -hmm. it meant I wasn't 100% present with them in that moment, whether it was making dinner or doing all the things they just saw I was always working. (laughs) Right. So it's a, it's a challenge to, to find that. And if you don't have support from someone helping you walk through that and helping you have confidence in the choices that you're making, it can be really easy to let all the negative self-talk creep in and make you feel like you're failing at everything. And, and, you know, you made such a very, very good point where, you know, sometimes we look to our family, our friends, our, our spouses or partners to tell us what they think we should be doing because they see us from a different perspective, mm-hmm. but we, we really don't go inside ourselves because we have all the answers. They're there. They're locked in. Yeah. And some of us are locked in deep <laughs> <laughs> having to dig, dig it out to figure out what is it that you really want. And I, I suspect that that's exactly what you help people to do is kind of dig deep within themselves to bring out what it is that they truly want to do with in life and in their business. Am yeah. I- and because people come to me mainly for business um, we start there. Yes. Right. That's where they feel safe to start. That's where they believe their biggest challenge and struggle is. Mm -hmm. So we have to start with what they need, Mm -hmm. what they think they need, what they want before we can get to the inner piece and get to the root of the issues. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, I had a client that came to me for a money mindset issue. That's what she believed she had because everyone was telling her that was her problem. What it came down to was an experience that happened many, many, many years ago while she was in college. A decision was made by somebody else that, and it kind of had a train, like a a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she struggled with feeling like she could make wise decisions And it derailed and it was her Mm -hmm. all of her time now up to this point as a mom and a wife and all these things that she was facing, it was really a belief in herself that she could not make good decisions. Mm. It wasn't a money mindset issue. It was a belief in herself that she was making the decisions that were best if the outcome wasn't dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think it comes down to when people come and work with me, and this is why I love the membership model is we can get into the business side, but then if they want to have one-off coaching with me, they want to do those things and they, Oh, after three months with you now, I'm ready to actually look at myself because they're not always ready. Right. And so giving them a place to come in, work on their business, get the business coaching, do the, do some of that, a lot of that foundational stuff it helps them eventually get to, oh, I am my business. I I am this thing that I'm creating and I am directly connected and I have to look at myself also if I'm going to have the breakthroughs that I want. Right. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned on your website, a signature business blueprint. Mm, yes. How do you help entrepreneurs create this signature business blueprint? Oh, they get to create it themselves, which is so amazing. There's so many programs and coaching that so much that I went through and I realized they all want to start with these basic foundations. So everyone has to start with the basic foundations. 
And I wanted to take it a bit different approach and be like, what do you already know? And so I give them basically a Google sheet that I've created and they get to go in and fill in all the blanks. Wherever you know you are 100% confident that this is your business model, this is how you speak, this is how you show up, fill it in. Anything that you're not sure of, leave it blank. Mm -hmm. That's where we find the blind spots. That's how we figure out what is your struggle in your business? Where do you not feel solid? Where are you missing that, that consistency along the way? And then we make it to where they know the right questions to ask over time so they can evolve it as they evolve, as their business evolves. And it's something that's going to be a working thing for them forever instead of just starting with the basics and never learning the right questions to ask themselves so they can support themselves through their growth of their business. Mm-hmm. So instead okay. of it being like a one-off program, it's actually the baseline that we're introducing into our coaching membership so that they can just jump right in, do it along the way. It's affordable. It works for them. It's doable because most of the entrepreneurs I work with are in that early stage or they're in a pivoting stage or some of them even are close to that high five figures, but still their foundation isn't solid and isn't ready and prepared for them to grow. So this is a great place for them to do that. Okay. okay. Interesting. So I'm going to ch- switch track a little bit and I'm speaking from the benefit of advanced age, much more so than you two youngsters, but it's just my, my opinion and I may be totally wrong that, that more people suffer from stress and burnout now than when I was younger, 30, 40 years ago. And, and I have a couple of ideas on, on causes, but am I on the right track or, or am I just harking back to the good old days? Like so many old people do. Is it I think a bigger you're right problem on point. Now? You're right on point. Mm -hmm. There's so much mental stimulation and visual stimulation from social media, from everything biting for our attention and our time. And we just think it's normal Mm -hmm. because it's Mm -hmm. evolution that's happening in our society. Mm -hmm. And so we just do it. We just, oh, someone brought out a new thing. Oh, we got, we just have to incorporate it into things instead of being very intentional and choosing what gets our attention, put down the phone, read a book. Turn off the TV and go sit outside and have a conversation. We're so focused on consumption and taking in so much that we're actually not giving our brains time to process and emotionalize everything that we're experiencing. And it's become the norm to not sit with yourself, to not mm-hmm. process things, to not... Um, it's, it's become the norm to kind of do everything you can to disconnect. All right. Which Uh, I uh, think increases a lot of the issues that come with that overstimulation. Mm. Something else I think has a bearing, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on this one, that if I go back to the age when a lot of entrepreneurs start, when I was in my late 20s, 30s, there was no internet. There was no chance of starting an online business, right? If you wanted Mm -hmm. to start a business, you had to make a serious investment in both capital and time and come Mm -hmm. up with a really good plan. Otherwise, it wasn't going to take off. So I I guess that could – and if you look at a lot of media, social and otherwise, there's a lot of pressure on people nowadays, youngsters, to start a business. You've got to be an entrepreneur, right? And, And maybe that makes the whole thing worse. I don't know. What do you think? I think a lot of people are understanding now that they have the opportunity to become entrepreneurs. So much of past generations was you go to school, you go to college, you get a job, you stay there for 40 years and you retire. But that's not even how our companies function anymore. The companies don't even see it that way. And they're not looking for longevity beyond five years. Right. And so I think now it's, it's a time where people are realizing we have the opportunity to become entrepreneurs. However, Damon John, um, one of the sharks on shark tank says it really well. He doesn't even, he, he, one, he doesn't ever meet his six month goals because he sets them so big, but two, never quit your day job until you're, you're 
your entrepreneurship opportunities can actually sustain you beyond that. So if you are working a job and you're doing those, that has to fund your business. And so I think that's where there's, I don't want to work for somebody else. I don't want to do these things. And we're really focusing so much on what we want instead of the work ethic and understanding Mm -hmm. these are things we have to go through. And it helps us grow as a person to experience those challenges. I learned so much working in a job that allowed me to move into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. That is a a basic business plan is so important, but in entrepreneurship, you hear just jump in and do it, just get started. And then people can't figure out why they're falling apart and not building a sustainable business. It's because it doesn't, always work that way. There might be a few people in the small percentage that that works for them and they eventually get there. Um, and they have this, what looks like overnight success, but for the majority of us, if we don't have a business plan, if we don't have a blueprint for us to follow that helps us know what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, who we're going to delegate to, who we're going to bring in to play at certain points of our business, how it's all going to function those things will very quickly derail someone and they'll shut down their business. Sure. No, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Good one. So if if someone is feeling in a rut, how do you help them navigate Mm -hmm. through that? It's different for everyone. I think the first thing is respecting where they are Mm. and really learning what got them there in the first place, why they even feel Mm. they're in a rut, what they feel contributed to it. And we kind of do a deep dive into that. Um, and, and the questions vary depending on the person and the situation and the industry that they're in and and who and what they feel is contributing to that rut. The, the one thing I hear from clients all the time is it's a few different variations. I'm drowning. Mm. I can't, eat, I don't even know what to do. Or I feel like I'm in a hole that I've dug myself into and I can't get out. And so in order to really help them start shifting out of that, it's all about slowing down. And that's the hardest thing for them to do Mm -hmm. because they've done everything everyone's telling them to do, but they don't know how to get rid of things that are no longer valid for this season. And they don't know how to really step confidently step out of and put down the plates. Stop juggling all the things, stop doing all the things and just put all the plates down on the table and just take a breath. And I think that's the hardest part for people to do because then they're like, well, I got to pick them all up again. And then I got to pick them all up again. (laughs) And so it's really helping them navigate how to slow down, how to step back and put their focus in a way into these areas in a way that serves them so they can serve others. And so how do they go about doing that? Are there specific tips that you would tell them to do in order to 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 do that process? Yeah, I actually have a whole process built around it called put down the plates. Um, oh, really? It, <laughs> I do. It's, it's part of the process um, in the Signature Business Blueprint. It's actually... Uh, they can go get it on a pod on one of my podcasts. I have a podcast, put down the plates. Um, But in order to do it, like I said, the first thing they have to do is really see every single thing they're juggling as its own individual plate. We talk about all the things we put on a plate. So the plate gets really full, but I really like the analogy of each thing having its own plate. Mm -hmm. And, and how do I intentionally show up to this one thing with 100% of my efforts and time and focus without my brain thinking about 50 million things right now. Mm. How, how do we do that? And and what is it that really is taking up my time? So if they were to just it, visualize putting down every single plate on the table and watch that table fill up, the next thing is, what are you going to get rid of? Mm-hmm. You have to get rid of it. You have to be done. It's not a focus. Or maybe you need to condense some things that your business is its own plate and you have all these different things in your business. But when you show up for your business, this is where you focus. What about your family? What about your friends? What about your hobbies? What about your faith? What about yourself? All of these things need a plate, but we're trying to 
deconstruct everything to every little detail so much, or we try to keep it as this really big visual overall picture. And so it's just about helping them figure out how do they see it so we can support them through figuring out what their table should look like. Set your table, sit down, show up. And when you're ready, move to the next thing and understand that you get to choose how frequently you show up to any one of those plates. No one else gets to dictate that. How Mm -hmm. do you shut Mm -hmm. out that external biting for your attention and you stop being reactive and start choosing and setting boundaries? And there's so much around being able to hold that and do that. And we all struggle with it. I still, I still battle with it sometimes. I still am not the greatest but it's always a work in progress and it's always something we should have grace with ourselves on knowing that we are human and we aren't perfect and nor should we ever be. And that's coming from a recovering perfectionist. (laughs) (laughs) And so it's, you just have to take that first step and put, put down the plates Mm -hmm. and just take a breath. (laughs) Mm. Wow. Good analogy, putting down the plates. And that's something that Kathleen gave me a hard time about a little while ago. I was involved in some external activism and it was taking too much time. And with, with Kathleen's good prompting, I eventually saw that and put that plate. Well, I didn't put the plate down. I threw it away and smashed it. But it's certainly that's fantastic. Is... That's even better. <laughs> but, but a case in point, that's why people need to work with someone like you, because if it wasn't for mm. Kathleen prompting me, I wouldn't have done it, right? I would have kept on trying to balance all those plates. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> The whole world has changed from a business point of view and socially over the last three years with lockdown. Are you seeing mm-hmm. people um, more affected by stress since the lockdown started or, or or has it worked? And I know that the answer to that, some people have done a lot better because they've found new businesses, new ways of working. But uh, overall, has it caused people more stress or not? What's, what's your opinion? I think as a society, we are forced to believe where the stress is forced upon us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so reactively as a society, I think people will freak out and be fearful and it has created a lot of stress. Um, I know for some people, they thrive being around people. And so I've heard stories just about people ending up in the hospital and then they're around people and all of a sudden they're starting to feel better Uh, because some of us really need that interaction and that human contact to fuel us because that's the type of people we are. Me, on the other hand, I'm great. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was doing everything online anyway. I was already ordering groceries. And when all of this happened, I had to go out in public more because there was less things available for me to order. So I had to go to three different stores. So it created a lot of stress for me personally. Mm -hmm. So I think, but I think as a society, like I said, as a whole, there are new stressors. There's that agenda being forced on us that all of these problems are happening and it creates a lot of fear. And so people struggle distinguishing what they should or shouldn't listen to because, Mm -hmm. well, I know this person and this is what they're saying, but the news is telling me this. And so it's, it's really about being uh, your own advocate Mm -hmm. and doing your own Mm -hmm. research. And a lot of people won't do that. They'll just listen to the, to the agenda and they'll follow that. And it creates its own issues and their own stress that I think has a a ripple effect into our personal lives. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. And, and unfortunately, I'm afraid it's not ending with things returning to normal as far as the virus goes, right? Just all sorts of other things are coming in, which is creating, it's extending that, that whole situation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Back to Kathleen. So, so Dean, if I was, if I were to call you up as a client, what initial steps would you take with me? That's a very broad question. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, in other words, where does the person start when they first contact you? Like- um, so they can go to my website, dinaadams.com. Super easy. Um, they can find me pretty much anywhere on social at Dina Adams or Dina S. Adams. And I think the first step that I think is the most important is knowing, do I want to work with this person? Okay. Do is this someone that I feel alignment with 
Do I feel like, what's that feeling I get? Because a lot of times we'll look at someone's website, we'll see the content and we'll see what they help with. And you know, that's what you need, but you really don't feel like this is where you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. So look at it, look at my social, watch videos, listen to podcasts, watch my YouTube, whatever it is. And if you feel alignment with me, great. Let's have, you know, you can either jump right into my membership or you can shoot me a message and we can have a chat to see what is going to be best for you. Is it really the membership? And that's a great place to start. Or would you rather work one-on-one with me and we can personalize your entire program in that mm-hmm. fashion? I don't I don't think it's worth their time to talk with me to see if they want to work with me. Right. I think it's a waste of, of their time. It's a waste of their money. And I think the best thing to do is really do your own research, get a feel for the person and whether it's me or somebody else, Get a feel for how they talk. A lot of people like, if you don't like me moving my hands all over the place and and my intensity and my volume that I get, I'm probably not the best person for you. Um, The other thing I do tell people too is if I'm not a good fit for you, they can book a next step call with me, pay for 30 minutes and we'll figure out like, who do you really need? And I'll see if I have someone in my network that I can refer them out to because Mm -hmm. The hardest part about this is not knowing where to turn and having a whole plethora at your fingertips on, you mm-hmm. know, on the, on the internet. I agree. And so people don't know, they can go to Google, but they don't really know these people. And so sometimes it's, I have some people I can get you connected with who will probably be able to help you keep finding the person instead of you searching mindlessly through the internet and investing in all these people and places that's not going to serve you. Mm-hmm. So those are a few different ways they can they can jump sure. in. Excellent. Very useful. Excellent. So here's one for you. You've worked, obviously you worked with a lot of people from the age of 12 when you first started your 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 first business. You know, in in your mind and in your experience, is there one characteristic or a mindset or a habit that sets successful people apart from those that Mm -hmm. never never really make it, remain average? Is there one or is it more complicated than that? For me, my perspective, Mm -hmm. and I have a masterclass on this, is it's their willingness to go through the hard things. Okay. They're willing to face it. They're willing to lose people. They and they and it's not even just the willingness. It's they know what and who they are willing to lose along the way. Mm-hmm. Good point. And if you Good don't point. know what you're willing to go through, and you don't know what that looks like, because there's so many unknowns, how are we going to know all that? It's it's one of the fastest things to derail people. They didn't know they were going to have to go through this. They didn't know they were going to have to deal with this. They didn't know it was going to cost this. They didn't know that doing this meant they were going to lose this person in their life or, you know, they just don't know. And so knowing and preparing yourself for what and who you are and are not willing to lose along the way and making those decisions beforehand, it makes the journey simpler, not easy, but it's, more simple to make the decisions when you come up to them. It makes it simpler to know what conversations you need to have with who. It helps you work on putting your support system together. It's all based on that foundation that most people don't want to address, don't want to talk about because it's all about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good answer. Very good. Interesting. Well, I know that you've already given us uh, some contact information, but maybe run it through one more time for us. (laughs) Sure. Um, My website is Mm dinaadams.com. And on social platforms, you can find me at Dina Adams or Dina S. Adams. Um, Pretty much anywhere. (laughs) Great. And for our audio listeners, those details will be in the description on whatever platform you happen to be listening to this on. Thanks for that, Dina. So I'm going to jump in. We have a minute left. So Dina, tell our audience a little bit more about podcasts. It's called Put Down the Plates, right? Yeah. Uh, that's one of the episodes. My podcast is called oh, Walking. It's with- yeah, it's called Walking with You in Life, Faith, and Business, and it's for entrepreneurs. And I have solo podcasts. One of them is Put Down the Plates. Um, I'm moving everything over to YouTube, so the all the videos are there for those as well. Um, but they can find that on pretty much any platform as well by searching Dina Adams or Walking with You podcast. Okay. Um, and it's just really about 
having a place to go to know someone's going to incorporate all the pieces and not just talk about only business and completely ignore the parts of us that are the most important in our walk. Great. Well, we'll be having a look at that for sure and uh, strongly suggest our audience does too. So thanks for that, Dina. Yes. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, thank you, thank so, you much. so much for having me. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure, Dina. Thank you. Great. Yes, and thank you all once again for tuning into our show. If anyone is interested in being a guest on our show, please visit us at theyackingshow.com. All you need to do is click on the contacts tab where you will find a short application form and we would love to hear from you. So until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.